गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो नेक्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अनदर सीक्वेंशियल स्टेटमेंट दैट वी आर यूजिंग इन बी एच डी एफ सो दैट इज वाइल यू ओके सो दिस इज हाउ दिंटैक्स ऑफ दट पर्टिकुलर वाइल लू सीम्स टू बी इट स्टार्ट विथ ए की वर्ड वाइल देन आफ्टर दैट बुलियन एक्सप्रेशन देन लू इज ए की वर्ड then within that particular while loop we are supposed to mention the sequential statements then finally we are supposed to close that particular while loop by means of considering the keyword and loop so this is how the syntax seems to be for while loop so it is an sequential statement so because of that we can able to use this particular while loop within the process and how this particular one is going to execute means so first it is going to verify this particular boolean expression so as i said previously boolean expression is so it combines boolean terms with vhdl predefined built-in operator such as and or not etc okay boolean expression combines boolean terms by means of using the built-in operator such as and or not where boolean terms boolean terms are boolean variables or results of comparisons using the relational operators like equals to not equals to less than less than equals to greater than greater than equals to already we discussed regarding that particular one so same thing i am explaining once again so that is what in boolean expression we can able to write then after that uh, evaluating whatever we represented within that particular boolean expression so after evaluating we may get a result either true or false because here i mentioned boolean okay boolean having only two types one is true another one is false by means of evaluating that particular boolean expression so we can able to get either the output value as true or false suppose if i got this boolean expression so value as true okay so if you got that particular one as true then obviously these are all the sequential statements it is going to execute then the second case is suppose if this particular boolean expression previous case we considered if it is true then it is going to execute all these sequential statements suppose if we got after evaluating this particular one we got it as false then obviously so it is not going to execute this sequential statement that means it is going to terminate that particular while loop okay so this is what going to happen so by executing this particular while loops based on the boolean expression only if that particular boolean expression is true then these are all the sequential statements it is going to execute if that particular boolean expression become false then it is not going to execute those sequential and it is going to terminate that particular while loop okay so this is how it is going to execute while loop so based on this particular one so we will look at one particular example okay so here i am assuming here i am not mentioning entity and architecture okay before architecture definition whatever we are supposed to mention all those i am not declaring okay simply whatever uh, statements are required just i am defining that particular one so here my intention is i would like to explain how while loop is going to execute in that regard so initially i am going to consider two temporary variables so one is j because of that i assumed it as a variable the assigning operator for that particular one is colon equals to and assign a value of 0 for that particular variable j and next suppose if i considered sum colon equals to 10 so that is the second variable assignment statement that i considered so because of this sum also i consider it as variable because of that the assigning operator is colon equals to once again and the value that we assigned is 10 so initially before starting off while loop i assumed those two variables such as like that next so if i start that particular while loop it starts with a keyword while then after that boolean expression so here j less than 20 that i mentioned so this is the boolean expression that i considered okay then after that loop loop then sequential statements if this case is true then what are all the sequential statement it needs to execute that we are supposed to mention within that particular while loop so coming to that so here i am describing such as that so sum colon equals to 
sum okay, multiplied with 2. So that is the operation that we need to perform. If this particular case is true, then it needs to perform. Sum must be multiplied with whatever value previously it consists of, it must be multiplied with 2. Okay? Then at the same time, so j will be assigned, so j plus 3. So that is second sequential statement that I mentioned over here. So j all on equals to j plus 3. That means uh, I am keep on increasing that particular j value within each and every loop. So increased by 3. Okay. Then we are supposed to close that particular loop by means of using the keyword end loop. Okay. So that is what? So this is the program so that I considered for this particular while loop. So what we have written over here, first j will be assigned a value of 0 because of variable, variable assigning operator, in the same way sum will be assigned a value of 10, then here I consider the while loop starts with a keyword while, then this is the boolean expression where I mentioned j less than 20, okay, then after that loop, then how it is going to execute, within this particular one I mentioned two statements, one is sum I am increasing by means of multiplying with 2 and while coming for j so we are increasing by means of adding 3 okay so because of that initially it is going to verify anyway first initially we assigned a value of 0 so because of that j less than 20 so where that particular boolean expression becomes true so because of that it is going to perform these two operations by means of that j is incremented to 3 so for the second loop j we got a value of 3 then once again it is going to verify this particular one still 3 is less than 20 because of that once again it is going to execute these two statement by means of the j increases to 6 so like that this loop keep on rotates how many times 6 times because initially for 0 one time for 3 second time then 6 8 okay okay 6 9 then 12 then 15 then 18 then after the 21 which is greater than that particular 20 so in that reward, uh, once if you got that particular uh, greater than 20, greater than or equals to 20, then this loop is going to terminate. Okay. So like that it is going to execute. Initially it is going to verify the Boolean expression and if it got true, then only it is going to execute the sequential statements, whatever we mentioned within that particular while loop. If you got that particular Boolean expression is false, then it is not going to execute all those sequential statements so that is how it is going to execute okay that is what regarding that particular while loop then after that so next we are going to discussing about the the time dimension okay so because uh, till now whatever statements that we discussed all those are all going to execute within zero simulation time itself Zero simulation time nothing but so within no time those statements are going to execute as I said previously anyway within architecture body concurrent statements we are going to describe okay like process selected signal assignment statement concurrent okay signal assignment statement all these we can able to place within that particular one okay so all those statements are going to execute at a time that to execution will be completed within zero simulation time itself that means within no time all those are all going to execute so till now we consider such as like that only but so in another way we can also able to provide okay whatever time delay required for the designer okay so that flexibility also there in our VHDL. We can also able to model in the time. Okay. Intentionally we can able to add the delay for the given statement. So that we can one way to achieve that particular one is by means of using the after keyword. So using of that. So intentionally we can able to provide the delay for the given statement. Okay. So here. So after keyword that we are going to use, after keyword we can able to use in any signal assignment statements such as sequential, concurrent, conditional and select signal assignment statements. So in any way in signal assignment statement you can able to use that particular after keyword. So 
considering that here we described one example so z so what is this particular one first of all so because of this is a signal assignment statement because of the assigning operator must be less than equals to so here i considered that particular signal assignment statement because in signal assignment statements only we can able to consider such type of after keyword okay to intentionally add the delay for that particular okay statement so coming to here so here what we have written is z less than or equals to 1 that means we are assigning a value 1 to the okay signal z so after 4 nanoseconds so this is how we are supposed to represent the intentional time delay for the given statement so using of the keyword after then after that after after you are supposed to mention the time so what is the time we are supposed to okay maintain for that that here we are supposed to mention 4 nanoseconds okay so after 4 nanoseconds when so when x equals to 1 and y equals to 0 else 0 after 3 nanoseconds if you look at the selected signal assignment statement so this part is not going to present okay signal assignment statement this after 4 nanoseconds is not going to present in general and this after 3 nanoseconds also not going to present other than that remaining all are seems to be same so what we studied over there z assigned a value of 1 when this boolean expression becomes true else 0 we are supposed to assign that's what we studied over there but here so after uh, evaluating that particular boolean expression so my intention is so after certain time delay we are going to assign these values to that particular signal so that is what my intention to achieve that particular one here we are supposed to consider the after keyword so where we are supposed to place means so after uh, this particular value and before when so we are supposed to mention over there so in this format only else zero so after three nanoseconds so that is how the syntax seems to be to use that particular after keyword within the given selected okay signal assignment statement that signal assignment may be a selected one a conditional one concurrent or sequential statement so now how this particular one is going to execute we will verify while coming for that in this particular statement first it is going to verify this particular one boolean expression okay when x equals to 1 and y equals to 0 so compiler is going to verify it so if x equals to 1 and y equals to 0 is true okay that's what we assign for that one means this boolean expression output becomes true if this case is true then this one need to be assigned to z in general if i didn't mention this particular after 4 nanoseconds so within 0 nanoseconds itself it is going to assign this particular value to z but here we mentioned after 4 nanoseconds because of that even though this case is true then it will wait for 4 nanoseconds to assign this particular one value into that particular signal okay after a delay of 4 nanoseconds only this value will be assigned to that particular signal z so that is what so the operation of this particular after keyword intentionally we are adding certain delay okay so in this particular case even though this particular boolean expression becomes true then after 4 nanoseconds only this one is going to allocate to that particular z and suppose if this condition is false then obviously 0 will be assigned to that particular z so for that also we mentioned a time delay by means of using keyword after after 3 nanoseconds so because of that what happens if this particular one falls then else 0 value will be assigned after 3 nanoseconds so because of that after 3 nanoseconds only that 0 will be assigned to this particular z so like that intentionally we can able to provide the time delay by means of considering the so after keyword okay so that is what uh, it is going to occur so using of after keyword we can able to achieve that particular one <coughs> okay so this is how it seems to be after keyword okay so that is the one example for that after three nanoseconds okay and uh, here uh, the thing was uh, because of uh, here we mentioned after 4 nanoseconds 
so it will take so to transfer from 0 to 1 0 to 1 transition time it will consider it as 4 nanoseconds that means from this particular statement so we can able to say that so it is going to take okay 4 nanoseconds for 0 to 1 transition but why coming for this particular one so it is going to take 3 nanoseconds for 1 to 0 transition that means transition period here we can able to describe within this particular after keyword so mentioning this particular one we can able to say that 0 to 1 transition time is 4 nanoseconds and 1 to 0 transition is 3 nanoseconds so that is what uh, regarding this particular so by means of using after keyword how we can able to intentionally so we can able to apply the delay for the given statement okay by means of that so circuit operation also we can able to so provide that particular delay okay so that is what reward in the so after keyword using of that intentionally we can able to provide the delay so another type of sequential statement so that we can able to use so that one is wait statement okay so in the term itself it mentioned that wait that means it is going to suspend the process for a specified amount of time wait is a sequential statement and this statement can be used to suspend a process for a specified time period okay so let me explain this particular wait statement by means of considering with one example so where such type of uh, suspend of a process is required so to know that particular one uh, so i will explain so how wherever we are going to use that particular weight uh, so considering an, an example okay so coming to that so here i considered one example to explain that particular weight statement as i mentioned weight statement is a sequential statement it is going to suspend the process for a specified amount of time so like uh, whatever we described in after while you are using wait statement also we are going to describe specific time for that okay so this is how so it is going to execute here i considered one particular program i didn't mention anything else entity and architecture uh, so all those things i didn't consider just to describe that particular wait statement whatever statements are required i considered those statements only in general this type of statements we are going to write within the test benches okay test benches are nothing but so where if you want to verify the functionality of that particular circuit by means of developing test benches directly we can able to verify let me if i consider the two input and gate so i would like to verify the functionality then we are supposed to give, apply the test bench for that test bench in this sense so input combinations all the input combinations if you apply it is going to generate the output based on that we can able to verify with the predefined outputs we came to know whether the circuit operation is uh, working properly or not so that is what here this type of statements are going to present in test benches okay test benches we are going to use to verify the functionality of that particular circuit okay so because of that uh, so this is how the statements so within that particular test bench so here mainly we are going to focus on uh, so how we can able to use the base statement so in that part that is the thing you are supposed to know other than that syntax and all so we will uh, look at later so what is test bench that is not there in our syllabus so but anyway here uh, to get a clarity regarding that particular wait statement only here i consider this particular program so here first we started with process and here for process there is no parenthesis that means there is no sensitivity list okay process also okay uh, without any sensitivity list also so we can able to write a process but till now whatever we discussed is with a sensitivity list only and when that particular process is going to execute what we mentioned in the last class is if there is any change in that particular sensitivity list signals then only process starts executing but while coming for this there is no sensitivity list because of that so it is going to execute only once okay starts at zero simulation time itself because there is no sensitivity list so by default whenever process is going to execute it start executing this particular program 
okay it should not wait for any other signal because of there is no sensitivity list and only one time only it is going to execute because of there is no sensitivity list uh, okay if there is any changes in sensitivity list means once again this particular process is going to execute but that type of situation is not there in this particular case so because of that so it is also possible to write a process without a sensitivity list but the difference compared with the previous one is it is going to execute only once that too it starts execution at zero time itself okay so it is not going to wait for any other signals okay so until the changes occurred in the sensitivity list okay because it doesn't have any sensitivity list so this type of process also possible then we get so here I mentioned uh, as I mentioned let it be two input and again if I consider and these two are the inputs x t and y t I assumed it as so as per that to verify the operation of that particular circuit we are supposed to apply for all four input combinations so because of that initially applied two inputs of that particular one is 0 0 then after that immediately you should not apply 0 1 because after applying the input that circuit will take certain time to execute that particular input based on that particular input it is going to generate output that may take certain amount of time up to that particular time we should not apply the next input combination so because of that my intention is so i have to suspend that particular process up to a particular amount of time then after getting the output then i can able to apply the next input combination so in such case by means of using this particular wait statement you can able to achieve it so what here we mentioned so this is how the syntax seems to be how we can able to write a wait statement so wait for 10 nanoseconds okay like ordinary english only we mentioned that particular one this is how that particular wait statement in general we can able to describe within that particular vhdl so wait for 10 nanoseconds so what it will do first this one is going to execute after executing that particular one so this process needs to wait for 10 nanoseconds that means it will suspend the process for 10 nanoseconds that means it will hold over here with these values only so it is not allowed to execute the next statement until 10 nanoseconds so that is what wait okay what we described is so wait is going to suspend the process up to a specified amount of time so here i mentioned 10 nanoseconds now so after executing this particular statement so it will suspend that particular process up to 10 nanoseconds meanwhile these inputs are going to apply and based on that circuit is going to generate the output then after that after 10 nanoseconds it is going to consider this particular next sequential statement so here i applied uh, so one input as zero another input as one then once again uh, after applying this particular one once again okay it needs to wait for 10 nanoseconds because of that same statement once again i used over here wait for 10 nanoseconds that means once again after executing this particular statement this wait statement is going to suspend the process up to 10 nanoseconds so after 10 nanoseconds once again control comes to this particular statement so now i applied one zero and once again it needs to wait for 10 nanoseconds and final combination is one one then after that here i mentioned wait so unlike previous one uh, i didn't mention for 10 nanoseconds over here so what happens after applying this particular one if i mention wait so then thereafter so this is going to suspend the process indefinitely that means up to infinite time so this particular statement only it remains okay that means so after applying one one so whatever output we got so until we close that particular uh, waveform so it lies in that particular state itself okay because of mentioned wait over here it suspend the process indefinitely because of we didn't mention any time up to what time it is going to suspend here we described by means of mentioning the 10 nanosecond but here we didn't describe so if you didn't describe it, anything means so always that particular process in that particular wait itself okay wait state only it lies forever then so that means up to we can able to close that particular waveform it remains in that particular state itself okay so that is what and finally we are supposed to close that particular process by means of placing an end 
process. So this is how. So that particular wait statement. So we can able to use in that particular test benches, especially majority cases we are going to use the test benches. And even uh, in regular programming also we can able to use that particular wait statement wherever this type of requirement is necessary. Okay. So that is how regarding that particular wait statement. Anyway, thank you. Thank you very much.